Now we are done with the body element. Let's move to the header section. Our header section has a site logo, a menu, and a button for responsive menu trigger. Go to the tree panel and select the header element. Go to the properties panel. In the background section, for color, choose white. Go to the margin and padding section. Select four for padding top and padding bottom. Now go to the border section and for border bottom, select two. You may know that Tailwind CSS does not provide any pre-built layouts or components. So we have the freedom to create our grid system as we need. Now let's work on the nav section inside. I'm going to add a container class, which adds the max width for different breakpoints. In PineGrow 5.97, this Tailwind class is not represented in the visual controls. We'll fix that in the next release. For now, we can simply use the standard tool for adding classes to the elements. Select the nav block, press Ctrl L or Command L, depending on your operating system, to add the class. Enter container and press enter. Now by default, container does not center itself, so let's add margin auto for left and right position. That will center this block. Go to the properties panel, go to margin and padding. For margin left and margin right, select auto. Our nav block should now be centered. With Tailwind CSS, we have an option to create class styles, which is actually a group of classes that can be applied to different elements in the same way we apply normal classes. This is very helpful so that we don't have to redo the same thing repeatedly. And it also provides consistency because we can edit the class style and all the elements will have the same changes. The container layout will be used in multiple places so I'm going to create a class style for these two classes, .container and .mx-auto, to create a class style. The container layout will be used in multiple places, so I'm going to create a class style for two of the classes, container and mx-auto. To create a class style, select the element which already has the classes, here our nav block. Now go to the Properties panel, click on the Pencil icon where it's written Inline. This will change to an input field. Now type your desired name. I'm going to enter Container. Now the Container class style is created and we can add more classes just by adding them to the same element. But the Container style should be selected on the Tailwind CSS panel. We can also add more inline classes to the same element to create variations. For that, inline should be selected on the Tailwind CSS panel. It is important to remember that we don't have to create class styles for every element. We only do it in cases where we will reuse the same set of classes on multiple elements in the project. Now I'm going to apply flex properties to the nav block to manage the layout of the inner elements. On the tree panel, we already have the nav block selected. Go to the properties panel. Now select inline as we don't want to edit the container style. Now go to display and for display select flex. Go to the flex container section. For wrap, select wrap. For align items, select center. We should also add a little spacing, so go to margin and padding. For padding right, select four, and for padding left, select four. We'll manage the spacing from the child element, so now we are done with the nav block. Let's go to the logo image, and we should set a width for it. Select the image, Go to the Properties panel. Go to Dimension. For Width, select 40. Next, we have a button element, which can be used for a responsive menu trigger. First, I'm going to work on the span elements inside, and then we'll work on the button element itself. Select all three span elements inside the button. 
go to the properties panel, go to display, and for display, select block. Go to the border section, and for border bottom, select two. On border color selection, pick current, which is the first on the list. Now go to dimension, and for width, select six. Finally, go to the margin and padding section, select one for both margin top and margin bottom. Now we should see three horizontal lines inside the button. Now let's work on the button element itself. Select the button, go to the properties panel, go to the border section, click on both equal icon so that all four sides will have the same value. Now set one of the borders to two. And for the border radius, select medium. For border color, select indigo 600. For the text section for color, also select indigo 600. We should add some spacing to the button. Go to the margin and padding section. For padding top and padding bottom, select two. For padding left and padding right, select three. Our button is ready, but we also need to add styling for the hover state. To add Tailwind classes for a hover state, go to the properties panel, click on pseudo state selector and select hover. The selection should change to hover and will have an orange color. Now any class you apply will be for the hover state. Let's change the colors for the hover effect. Go to the background section. For color, select indigo 600. Go to the text section. For color, select white. Now you should also see the changes as the hover state is on. To go to the normal state, click on the pseudo state selector and select none. Now select the next block which has our menu links. Again, let's work on the links inside and then we'll work on the main block. Select all five links, go to the properties panel, go to the text section and for weight, select medium. Go to the margin and padding section. For padding top and padding bottom, select two. For padding left and padding right, select four. Now to add classes for the hover state. Click on the pseudo state selector and select hover. Go to the text section and for color, select indigo 600. Now go back to the normal state by clicking on the pseudo state selector and select none. We should create a class style for these menu links. So if we need to make any changes, we can implement them easily. As we already have our menu link selected, go to the properties panel, click on the pencil icon where it's written in line, and it will change to an input field. Here I'm going to enter nav link. We will need to come back to nav link again, so let's move on to the next block. Next, we have a div block, which has a separate link element. This link element will have a different design than the nav links, so you'll have to separately work on this. Select the div element and then go to the properties panel. This block has to appear on the same line with the other nav links. So go to the display section. For display, select inline block. Now go to the margin and padding section. For padding top and padding bottom, select two. For padding left and padding right, select four. Now select the A element inside. On the properties panel, go to the text section. For color, select white. Go to the border section, click on the both equal icon. Select two for any border side, and then select medium for border radius. For border color, select indigo 600. Go to the margin and padding section. For both padding top and padding bottom, select two. 
For both padding left and padding right, select 6. Go to the background section. For color, select Indigo 600. Go to the display section and for display, select inline block. Now let's work on the hover effect. Click on the pseudo state selector and select hover. Go to the text selection. For color, select indigo 600. Go to the background selection and for color, select indigo 100. Now go back to the normal state by clicking on the pseudo state selector and then click selecting none. Now we're done with this link, but I'm going to use the same style for other links on the page. So let's create a new class style for our links. On the properties panel, click on the pencil icon where it's written in line. Then enter button. Now we're done with this link. Now let's manage the layout on the nav block. We also need to make it responsive so that the nav links block should hide on smaller devices and the trigger button should be hidden on the bigger screen. Let's select the button. Go to the properties panel. Go to the margins and padding section. For margin left, select auto. Now let's hide the button on larger screen sizes. Tailwind CSS has defined its breakpoints as small, medium, large, and extra large. Here we're going to use large for our main responsive breakpoint, which is 1024 pixels. Go to the properties panel, click on the large tab. Now we can apply classes for this breakpoint. To hide the button, go to the display section. For display, select hidden. Our button should be hidden now and should only be visible on small screens. We can easily check a page for different breakpoints within the PineGrow web editor. To add multiple page views, go to the top tab of the page window, click on the icon with the plus symbol. You should get a second page view now and you can change the breakpoint from the dropdown. I'm going to select medium. Now you can see on the smaller page view, our button is visible, but it is not on the larger page view. Similarly, let's work on the nav links block. First select all on the breakpoints tab. Select the div block, the parent of the nav links. Go to the properties panel. Go to the margin and padding section. For margin left, select auto. Go to the dimensions section. For width, select full. Now before hiding this block, I want to work on the child elements of this block so that each link should be in a single row. From the tree panel, select one of the link elements, which has nav link class style applied. Now any change we do on this element will result in changes for all the other elements as well. Go to the display section. For display, select block. Now on the breakpoints tab, click large. Again, go to the display section and for display, select inline block. When you're all done, select all on the breakpoints tab. For applying responsive styles, you have to always think of this from the smaller screen to the bigger screen. First, you should apply styles for the smallest screen and then using breakpoints, you should apply styles for the larger screens. Now let's work on the parent div block again. As you can see, our menu block is below the logo on the bigger screen and it should be hidden on the smaller screen. Select the div block. Go to the display section. For display, select hidden. Now on the breakpoints tab, click on large. Again, go to the display section. For display, select block. Now go to the dimension section and for width, select auto. When you're all done, select all on the breakpoints tab. Now you can see our header layout is complete. Our menu hides on small screens and we also have a button to trigger a responsive menu. 
Tailwind CSS does not provide a pre-built feature for responsive menu buttons. So to implement any script, you have to work on it manually. But luckily, we've got the PineGrow web editor with the help of PineGrow interactions so you can implement such an interaction easily. I'm not going to cover how we can do this in this tutorial, but you can watch our other tutorials related to PineGrow interactions.